Puerto Rico, yeah. then there's no water available. Right. And somebody's selling bottled water. It's right. hard to get to. Right. And they want to charge ten dollars a water bottle. Yeah, right. that's that they need it to live. Right. So that is unfair extortion. Then why don't you and I go there and dig a well and provide water for a much lower cost that undercuts the competition? What and now do we put meantime? that jackass out of business. That, that's so much time though that people are in the meantime suffering. So you feel like the government's job is to come in and fix that? Like the, the they come in, call in the cavalry, and we're gonna fix it for you and everything. I mean, just look at the history. I mean, okay. <laughs> Look at the government's budget. Like, can you, I mean, we're about to come out with a video on budget. <laughs> like, you're a budgeting uh, man, right? Yes, I am. You are good with your budget. I'm great with my budget. Look at the government's budget. Not great. Look how they manage their money. Not well. Would you trust them to handle capitalism for us instead of letting I, the market be free? But that's a flawed argument because some things the government does well and other things they suck at. But they're both related to finances. This is an economical mm -hmm. argument. I mean, also the budget and a personal person's budget are not one and the same. You're listening to the Kniep and It Real Jodcast. This is your host, Seth Kniep. All right, welcome back to the Jodcast. This is Seth Kniep, Kniep and It Real. I have a special guest with me today, Jay Brian Jones. Jay, welcome. That's me. Thank you very much for having me, Seth. So why am I here? You are here because we're going to cover some really hot topics right now that have hit the news. We might even get a little bit into debating these topics. First of all, well, I'll list just the main topics, then you can take it from there. Amazon, a lot of people are recommending that Amazon be broken up into little pieces. Mm -hmm. Legislation. <laughs> that would be interesting. Um, uh, should Amazon use cryptocurrency? Amazon getting into the video game world? Amazon destroying food? From the grocery and gourmet category yeah. versus other options. That'll be interesting. Walmart uh, offering to pay for full college tuition. I believe it's community college. Actually, there's a list. We'll go over which colleges those are. Okay, awesome. So yeah, we're just going to jump right in. By the way, for those of you guys who are listening, we want your feedback. So if you have any questions at all, you can email me directly, seth at jod.com. Take it away, Jay. Yes, email him, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll forward it to Jay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our first topic is Amazon job posting hints at a plan to accept cryptocurrency. So there was an insider who posted this job listing mm -hmm. about a week ago, and it's a digital currency in blockchain product lead so that you will leverage your domain expertise in blockchain distributed ledger central bank, digital, uh, yada, yada. Basically, you're going to do the cryptocurrency chain of Amazon AWS. Right. So they're kind of already in this with AWS because AWS allows for that technology and they sell it as an infrastructure product. Right. But Amazon also, after these reports, denied that they're going to accept crypt cryptocurrency, that it's not part of their current plan. So what are your first thoughts? What would they use it for? So if they're going to accept cryptocurrency, practically, what does that mean for the consumer, the Amazon seller for AWS? Like, do you, what does that look like practically? I think practically that looks like just like dollars and cents. You accept it. And it's in the realm of validating this technology. And I think this insider who leaked this information might have stake in in <laughs> cryptocurrency and Bitcoin because it jumped way up after this leak happened. So it reminds me of what's happened with Apple multiple times where these you have these insiders, they release information that's not supposed to be released until they have that huge conference. And then people mm -hmm. go crazy about it and make YouTube videos about it. But I, I still got to drill down on this before I answer your question. So are you saying that as a third party seller, I could get paid in cryptocurrency? Does no. it go that far? Maybe they have hinted about accepting cryptocurrency. Okay. They haven't hinted As at anything. As in payments to Amazon, like just the other day, I purchased a hat because tomorrow I'm doing a photo shoot with my wife. Mm -hmm. I could have paid in cryptocurrency. Right. And I could have paid with my lawnmower with cryptocurrency. Gotcha. Uh, they didn't say anything about paying anybody back, third party sellers, right. distributors, anything like right. that. And Not the reason yet. I ask is because we've had so many people say, Seth, since you guys teach people how to sell on Amazon, 
can you accept cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, as a payment instead of regular dollars? And uh -oh. we said, maybe in the future. So uh -oh. a lot of people have requested this, which I find <laughs> fascinating. So to answer your question, I think it's brilliant. Wonder why people are asking to pay with this? Because from my understanding, most people, Bitcoin is not the wave of the future for them, even right. though I believe in the technology, the whole environment thing, maybe something we got to work out. Right. But to me, the technology makes sense. It's not it's not beholden to a certain nation, right. things like that. But I don't know why people are anxious to pay for it right now. Because, because it's innovative, it's new. Well, to most people, it's a hustle. Yeah, it is it, a hustle. But like I invested 10,000 in Bitcoin, it went up to 16,000 in a few months. So for me, it's like, okay, it makes sense to invest, use this to pay for something because I just grew my dollar. I'm, it's like practically getting it for nothing unless I sell it. If I buy one Bitcoin, so to speak, okay, for $10,000, mm -hmm. just a simple example, and it goes up in value to 15,000, why wouldn't I wanna take 2,000 of the 15,000 to pay for people to teach me how to make money in a different platform? Like, why wouldn't I want to? Well, it, it's like stocks, right? you know, you have it so that the price goes up. If you yeah. just have it and then you gain $500 on yeah. the stock, it's unrealized gains until you sell it, yep. but that's still an asset that's worth the money. Absolutely. And most people that are in blockchain right now are just hoping the price goes up. Right. So if they sell it, then they're missing out on those future gains. I totally agree with you from an investment perspective, it makes sense. However, consider this, Jay. For some people, just the idea of being able to start something new. There's always the new people who try it. It's like when mm -hmm. someone comes out with a new product that's never been invented before, they're always the more risky people who are going to try it. And just the idea that they're dealing in cryptocurrency to them, it's romantic, it's fascinating. It's like, they're not just looking at it from an investment perspective, they believe it's the thing of the future, so they want to normalize it. I think there's a little mm -hmm. bit of a, a vision and an experience that comes with that that wouldn't make sense on a spreadsheet but makes sense to one's passion for living i think the desire to normalize it is because then the bitcoin prices go up <laughs> like just from amazon maybe hinting about accepting this right bitcoin prices go way up right and same thing happened when Tesla made their thoughts and yeah. rolled back on. Absolutely. So even when Elon Musk just makes one statement about something, boom, it goes up all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah. It's unbelievable. Uh, Twitter's a weapon. See, I think this I think this proves something that the value of cryptocurrency or a dollar bill or any kind of stock is dependent on what people believe. Yes. Isn't that weird? But the thing is, it's also always going to be unrealized gains unless you're trading it for someone who's also True. a hustler. True. Unless you can spend it. Because if Bitcoin ends up to where like, it's something people can buy and trade and right. never spend, then it, it's useless money. Right. It's, it's just like pretend digital asset. It's like it's, it's like a game. Yeah, it's, it's like, like an online game. game. Like, oh yeah, we got my money yeah. to buy more of these upgrades, but I got the money from doing yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's like in Pokemon Go and I'm playing and I caught this Pokemon, <laughs> right. but I don't really have it. It only exists digitally on my phone. Yeah, yeah, agreed. So until Bitcoin is accepted by places like Amazon, then it's still kind of going to be on the fringes. But I have to say this. I love how unregulated it is. I'm one of those crazy mm. people who believes that it not being regulated, the fact that there's no central bank that controls it is an amazing mm -hmm. thing. Because in my opinion, that supports capitalism. It lets people be free. And it, it what it does is it creates a new set of thinking about digital currency. Like we take for granted that if I hand you a dollar, you believe you just received a dollar of worth, right? Right. Why can't that be digital? Like, why can't it be? What is the worst that's going to happen apart from the fact that there'll be many frauds and scams, but that happens in every industry <laughs> well, as well as Amazon. <laughs> I mean, back in the day, it used to be the gold standard. You know, you trade dollar and this exactly. represents a portion Physically. of physical gold that you right. can get from the U.S. Treasury. Yep. Now it's not that way anymore. So it's much more based on trust. Apocalypse happens. We've seen this in constant media then the dollar is pretty much just paper you can burn. You yeah. want to trade physical assets, you know, the barter system. Yep. So we just need to get cryptocurrency on that same level. And I do also like that level of entrepreneurialism. I'm not saying that no regulation should ever happen to it because there's things that we can't foresee that right. might be dirty. Right. Yeah, and maybe there will be a better way to track it because like there's a lot of 
terrorists or people that do ransomware yep. that are saying, pay me in Bitcoin. Yep. So maybe regulation will come to come by that. Yeah. And it's really hard to know until we've actually gotten into it. Then we're like, oh my goodness, this is being abused. And so then they create a law to address it. It's like what Microsoft was doing for years. So they found a way legally, and the question is, was it ethical? That's another question. <laughs> but they found a way to reduce their the taxes they had to pay legally by yeah. having their software create owned by companies in other countries where there is no tax liability. Right, legally. the shell company. Exactly. But what would happen is they would still bring that money into the US. And so then the government said, wait a minute, that should be taxed because you're bringing it to the U.S. They said, yeah, but we're following the law. And so it literally created this massive amount of laws years ago that now mm -hmm. make it very, in most cases, not economical to have offshore companies if you live in the U.S. If you live in other countries, it makes sense. But in the U.S., it's actually really difficult. So in other words, I have properties in, Guatem or in Mexico, one in Guatemala. If I bring that money into the U.S., I'm taxed on it, even though it was made in Guatemala. Even if I paid income tax in Guatemala, I am taxed minus the tax treaties. Because Microsoft was so new, they had no standard to go by. And it wasn't until mm -hmm. that happened. It's called F part um, 73. I'm going to find it really quick. Yeah. I mean, it's also kind of happened in the digital world when online e-commerce first started to be a thing is there was no sales tax. Right. And then they had to add sales tax because so much of the economy went online. Yeah. Yeah. It just wouldn't make sense. So for Bitcoin, I would not be surprised at all if some sort of tax came to that. Totally understand. And I think that is the right way to do regulation because mm -hmm. first you see something being abused. You don't know it until then. Then you respond to it and create a policy or legislation that addresses it so it can't be abused in the future. In most cases, in some other cases where experts can just see something coming and we avoid it altogether, you know, it's kind of like a minority report. You right. prevent the murder before it happens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which that's uh, that's not, that's, that's, I'm, not, I'm not saying that that was the right Science thing to fiction. do <laughs> in, that, in that movie. Uh, but let's get back to, do you think that Amazon is going to accept Bitcoin currency or not? 1000% I believe they will. And I think they're really? also going to do virtual reality. Yes, absolutely. Because Amazon's cutting edge ever since mm -hmm. the beginning. And people forget this, even though Amazon's a huge corporation and we don't tend to think of CEOs, he's no longer the CEO, but owners of or founders of companies as entrepreneurs once it's big. Now it just seems like this big, huge, massive corporation, mm -hmm. right? The reason I believe is because everything Jeff Bezos has done up to this point is incredibly innovative. Everything. He takes risks. Mm -hmm. The company's known for that. In fact, when I was contacted by Kirsty Carey, who was the person responsible for me being flown to Amazon's headquarters, one thing she taught me, she said, Seth, everyone at Amazon is taught to be an entrepreneur, at least the high level. Maybe not the customer support people, but she said, you are taught to take risks. Like if you don't take risks and you just always play it safe, you lose your job. You have to take risks and you have Jeez. to be innovative. So that is the kind of culture that is within Amazon, at least on the higher level leadership. I can't speak yeah. for the lower level. How do they keep their employees then if they're just gonna be entrepreneurs and you know start their own company? Well, I kid you not, when we sent out the application for a president of just one dime, a lot of, a, about a third of those people are Amazon employees, mm. about a third. Of those people who applied work for Amazon. Let's so, hope that Amazon doesn't get mad at us for that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Okay, so I'm more hesitant on if Amazon will actually do this. Yeah. Uh, because it comes out from an insider source that's leaked it. I mean, the job posting was public, but right. they pointed it out to the press. Yeah. It was reported on Bloomberg, on Reuters, on CNBC. And I think they were probably financially motivated because they had stock in Bitcoin, but it also doesn't mean that it's not happening. They also vehemently denied this rumor that yeah. they're going to come out with it. And as uh, I think it was Bloomberg pointed out that a sprawling company with a lot of experiments going on and initiatives, those don't always turn into new products. Absolutely. See, here's what I believe will happen. So even if this hadn't come up, if you'd asked me the same question, I would still would have said yes, even if no one released anything. So the reason I believe it will happen is not because of what someone said. I agree with you. It could have been uh, his motivation, his incentive could have been financial mm -hmm. for sure. Also, Amazon's <laughs> back talk, because they, they have previously confirmed interest, in right. it, but they never said they're going to do anything with it. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if Amazon is just like, no, 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 no. And then a few months later, yes, yes, but yes. But here's the thing. Amazon has started so many projects 
and the majority mm -hmm. of them have failed. And when people look at that, they right. think, oh man, that's horrible. That's actually what it means to be an entrepreneur is you try mm -hmm. this, you try this, you try this, you try the this. fire phone. <laughs> exactly, and exactly. They've started a lot of stuff, even internally to Amazon sellers. They've started stuff that just, it never worked out. It just kind of mm -hmm. dissipated. So my point is, I believe it's only a matter of time before they do try it and try to implement it. Whether or not it actually works is, an, is another question. What, I believe it still will, but that could be f way further down in the future. What about the rumor that they're gonna start their own cryptocurrency? I don't know. I mean, if anybody can do that in the age of Bitcoin domination, and they could, it, unless it's a meme like Dogecoin, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, then I think Amazon's pretty much the only other place that could pull it off. They have the infrastructure. Exactly. For so many years, they weren't and the profitable. the influence, even more importantly. Absolutely. And for so many years, they're built on this premise that they weren't profitable. They didn't make mm -hmm. money for year after year after year because they kept putting their profits back into the business to grow it because they're more interested in innovation and creating something that actually changes the world than just, oh, mm -hmm. we have to be profitable. Yeah. Like it, it, I'm not saying they don't want to be, and it's good to be, but <laughs> no, it's fascinating to me. No, I don't, I don't want to what are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that for them creating their own cryptocurrency, even though I you know, wouldn't trust Amazon with my livelihood or my baby or my life or anything like that, I would trust them with a cryptocurrency yeah. because they have that sort of reputation yeah. that they're not a YouTuber like Jake Paul or whoever who's just doing a pump and dump scheme. Right. You know, who's just making it for themselves, owning a lot and telling people to buy it and then cashing out. Yeah. Amazon's not going to do that. Yeah. Wouldn't make sense. Yep. All right. So let's go to our second topic. So from CNN, they wrote this article, Amazon is everywhere. Here's how the U.S. could break it up. Hmm. And this is big news, not just because of some sort of speculation and a what if, but because legislation has actually already been produced. Last month, a bipartisan group of U.S. House lawmakers introduced a slate of bills that are addressing both Amazon, Facebook, Apple, and Google, all trying to bring them down to size. Before going into the specifics, do you believe in breaking up companies in a broad sense? No. Not at all. No, <laughs> I don't. No circumstances. Well, there could be an exception. <laughs> okay. You know, if okay. like someone's life depended on it or they're doing something incredibly illegal and they have to take them down, that's one thing. Okay. But if they're not doing anything illegal, I don't believe in it. So why? Because they have the right to, if they built this themselves, they mm -hmm. have the right to receive what they worked for. Okay. So you're, you're a capitalist, right? You, of course. So I think it is anti-capitalist to have companies hold a monopoly on a whole sector of industry. What do you mean by monopoly? I mean by AT&T bought Time Warner Cable, right? AT&T owns a ton. It's ridiculous. Spe they bought They're Spectrum the largest now media company in the world right now. Yeah. So yeah. right now in my home, mm -hmm. I can only get either AT&T or Spectrum Internet. Right. They're both owned by the same people. Right. But you're assuming that because of that, because AT&T owns all of these sub companies, you're assuming that they all just do whatever AT&T says and they're all aligned. See what I mean? That's where mm -hmm. people miss it. If let me just put it this way, AT&T, in fact, let me just look it up really quick cuz we I it's funny you say this. I yeah. literally looked at this list a, a few I, days ago. I mean, not all it's of this can be John what Oliver own. and like <laughs> and just like make insults <laughs> at business daddy. Right. But my point is AT&T, like for example, they own CNN, they own HBO, they own Warner Brothers. Let's just take those three as an example, okay? Mm -hmm. That's just a few, okay? Yeah. The assumption that because AT&T owns them means it's a monopoly, I think is flawed because it assumes okay. that all the companies that they own are just one company, but they're not. It would be like this, Jay. Imagine that um, company, okay, let's say Helium 10 tried to buy us, right? <laughs> <laughs> there was a day when Manny yeah. Coates, he goes, Seth, can we just- door? Well, not in that perspective. Uh, Manny Coates had said, how about we do the software and you guys do the coaching? And I wasn't mm. interested, but that they got bought by a massive company, by the way, Helium, Helium 10. 10. Yeah, a few years ago. Oh, and they have like h worth hundreds of millions. Jungle mm -hmm. Scout, they didn't get bought, but they're raising a ton of money. But let's just take Helium 10. Mm -hmm. If they bought us, okay, and then they bought another company that does something similar, the assumption that because they bought us, they're monopolizing, I think is false. For just one dime to succeed and be profitable it still has to act as its own independent enterprise of law and of cause and effect. You see what I mean? 
Like mm -hmm. we have our own brain. If all of a sudden we just started doing whatever Helium 10 says and taking on their branding, it would destroy Just One Dime. People come to Just One Dime because there's something we offer that other companies don't. That's my point. But go ahead. Yeah, Counter. so I mean, the thing with, let's go to Walmart. Walmart back in the day, mm -hmm. huge. Everybody was shutting down small businesses. Um, people were complaining Can I about jump that. jump in? Yeah. That's not fair to say. How, you, Walmart was shutting them down. Are you telling me they're walking up there with a, a gun? <laughs> no, 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 they were running them out of business. <laughs> okay, that's they're fair. running small ones, small ones out of business, right. which I mean they did. But why? Why were they running them out of business? Because they were offering the same products at lower prices. Okay, how was Sam Walton able to accomplish that? Uh, buying in mass, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, how was he able to accomplish buying in mass? That I don't know. Okay, that's my point. Can I use an illustration for a minute? Okay. Okay, let's just say you start a lemonade stand and I start a lemonade stand, okay? Uh huh. So we're gonna sell lemonade. <laughs> this is a fun illustration. Mm -hmm. And we're both selling, but you do a heck of a lot better job than I do, Jay. All right, so you have a mm -hmm. massive market share of people buying lemonade at your table, and I don't have that many. And so in a sense, you pushed me out of business because you did a better job. So far, has anything unfair been done in your opinion? No. Okay, now let me carry on the illustration. So one day I walk up, I'm like, man, you're doing so well, Jay, how are you doing? And you say, Seth, I have an idea. I'll let you sell at my table for a fee. Okay, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna charge you 50% referral fee. Okay, that's kind of like Costco, but. <laughs> <Not> I'm <laughs> trying exactly. to make an Amazon illustration here, <laughs> but now I'm at your table, right? Uh -huh. And. I'm able, because you have a bigger table and a bigger platform, mm -hmm. now I have an opportunity to stay in the game. You're gonna make more money, which means you can actually offer lemonade to other companies as well. So now what you've done is you've literally, instead of just pushing me out, you've actually brought me in and allowed me to compete a fee to you, but an advantage to me. And I don't have to worry so much about marketing because you already have so much recognition because mm -hmm. of the hard work you've done. Do you think anything unfair has been done at that point? Have nope. you done anything unfair? I don't think that accurately represents what happened with Walmart, you know, back in the 90s. And to be fair, I, that's fair. I was, my mind's going towards Amazon, <laughs> but carry on. Okay. Carry on. For Amazon, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Third party sellers, right. that is completely fair. Whether or not Amazon should be broken up, I think is a much more specific com conversation about than whether any company should be broken up. Because, because there's so many companies they represent. Yeah, it's insane. It, yeah, exactly. So like, I don't think, I can't think of a way specifically how Amazon is creating an anti-competitive atmosphere aside from- Oh, I can, but that's, <laughs> <laughs> I actually I'm, can, okay. even though I don't agree. Well, I mean- I agree they've done anti-competitive stuff, but I don't agree they should be broken up. Except for like not allowing third party sellers to lo lower their prices outside of Amazon's platform without knocking down their listings. Well, that I agree with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about other stuff, but yeah. keep going. Okay. Keep going so, about So Walmart. anyway, I'm gonna keep going with- Yeah, uh, Sam Walton, in, Walmart. I'm gonna, yeah. Actually, I'm gonna go back to AT&T okay. and Time Warner Cable. Right. So. I don't have any other options in my house. So if they set the same price, uh -huh. and then I don't win as a consumer. When you say no other options, you mean outside of AT&T, what was the other company you a mentioned? Time Warner Cable Spectrum. Okay, which is owned? By AT&T. By AT&T, got yeah. it. Okay. So they both have the same parent company. Right. If they're just like, so the only reason why they aren't already charging like $200 a month for internet yeah. is because then Google Fiber might come in. Right because they've already been to Austin. Right. They're not at my house, sure, but they're other places around Austin. So you feel monopolized? Yeah, I do, because I only have a choice between you or your twin. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure, do you feel like those, com those prices are competitive towards each other, or do you feel like that's irrelevant because it's still the same company owns them? I think it's irrelevant because the same company owes them and they are extremely similar. Yeah. I ended up going with AT&T because that was fiber versus Spe Spectrum not being fiber and it, it, there's a very small difference between them, yeah. actually. And that's the part where I d differ from you. Mm -hmm. If if AT&T owns, you said Fiber Spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Fiber Spectrum, same internet we use here, and they also own Time Warner, okay? Those are still two companies. Even though they're owned on paper by a parent company, That they're st for them to operate and do well, they have to have differentiated services. They mm -hmm. have to give an option of choices for them to work. You see what I mean? So I think just because AT&T owns them, does not automatically make it a monopoly because there's still two companies that have to get their own customers. They have their own P&L, they have their own workers, they have their own workman's comp, all those things they ha still have to go through. Okay. So if AT&T disappeared, you still got two options. If Time Warner and 
cable spectrum spectrum cable were still there, you still have two options. That's like a cartel almost. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> a cartel. A cartel. <laughs> like, imagine imagine that there are two coffee places in mm -hmm. the city. They're mm -hmm. the only two. I own one of them. Yeah. Right? And then I buy out the other guy. Sure. I can raise the prices. People might not go to me for coffee at all. But then you, your business will go down. See, you, when you just say you can raise the prices, you say it as if it's just willy nilly, I can raise the prices and they'll buy. Yeah, that it actually that happened way. with Walmart. That Walmart would undercut local businesses. And then once they were dead, they would raise the prices. Okay. There's a history of that. But I understand. But business doesn't work if your prices aren't competitive. So here's my thought counter to that. Mm -hmm. Let's okay, so Walmart, they you mentioned they raised their prices. I'm not aware of that. They're still extremely cheap from what I can see, but mm -hmm. let's say they did, okay? So they raised the prices. Mm -hmm. Cuz they drove keeping, the competition out of town. What's keeping you from saying, "You know what? Because you guys have raised the prices, I could do better than that. I'm going to go start my own new Walmart. We'll call it Jmart. <laughs> <laughs> and Jmart is going to kick your ass because we have lower prices." See, that's the freedom right there. I think that's what mm -hmm. people miss is I get, I get the, the sentiment, and I don't mean that condescendingly, I get it. But isn't that the whole point of capitalism is now you're free to go start a competing company and meet a need? Doesn't that mean there's more opportunity now for someone else to say, you know what, Time Warner, AT&T, Spectrum uh, Fiber Spectrum, or Spectrum Fiber, I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. You guys are controlling prices, fine. I'm gonna go start mine, I'm gonna undercut you and do a better job, which has happened so many times. It's happened in like sunglasses or glasses. You know, we, we talked about- It's happened in technology companies. Yeah. It's happened all over, it happens all the time. Yeah, that, ha that happens. But I mean, it's not easy to do and you need to have a bunch of capital to start that out. Right. Like me personally, yeah. I couldn't go compete with Spectrum and AT&T. Like, I respectfully who really disagree. Can? I respectfully disagree. You respect that, yeah. that I personally- You're, under, you're like, underestimating your ability. Sam Walton did, wasn't born with a thousand dollars in his back pocket. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was born naked. He didn't have a back pocket. So, mm -hmm. like the idea that Je the idea, well, I can't because they're so big. Well, that company when Jeff started, J Jeff Bezos, mm -hmm. he couldn't afford a desk, so he got a door, and that was his desk. He didn't have money. He left. He walked away from a huge bonus he would have gotten from the company he worked for. It was um, on um, Wall Street. Do you know how much he made per year? I don't. But I know it was a lot. If you Google it, you'll find yeah. it. Yeah, For, I, he says this. He shares the story. Yeah, I mean, he made a lot. Yeah. He took a huge risk and then he built something up. My point is, that's the whole point. And I, I would just have to ask you this. Mm -hmm. So if we were to follow your logic down the road, that means mm -hmm. just one dime and we'll not take it personal at all. Go for it. All right. Could never buy another company. We can never buy out a competitor. Yeah. I, right? So what do Amazon has done sometimes, like if Amazon running their Ser their service, let's say they go into video games, yeah. then they're not competing with themselves. See that? See that is something you can do and diversify. Mm -hmm. But if Amazon, um, let's say, bought up Walmart, yeah. which is a competitor, yeah. then that's way too much concentration into the same company. So where do you draw the line? So I am trying to avoid futures like by and large from mm -hmm. Wally or from. Car <laughs> or from countless like uh, uh, cyberpunk futures where it's just one company can dictate and just control the world because they have too much power. That There's... works in communism, but it doesn't work in capitalism. <laughs> no, it does work in capitalism. How? So what is the largest company in the history of time? I don't know. The East India Trading Company. Okay. From, from uh, Britain. Right. Right. They, they were alive in the days of the pirates. Yes, they were. Yeah. And they had the most amount of concentrated wealth ever. People suffered. They traded slaves. They did proxy wars. All Can time. we agree, <laughs> though, that we both agree slavery and racism are wrong? OK. That doesn't support your point that you can't buy another company just because they had it's like slavery is wrong. But that doesn't that. You can't bring that in as evidence. No, so that's what, not evidence. What I mean is, without regulation, yeah. companies will always do what's most profitable, profitable for them. Fair enough. I'm with you on that. And that those things that are profitable are not always good for society or for capitalism in the economy. You're assuming that in order for a company to succeed and do what's right, you have to have the government interfere to control it. But it simply doesn't work like that. Here's the thing: I won't make money. Jay, on Amazon, if I don't kick my butt and do an amazing job and provide a better offering for the customer, capitalism is customer-centric 
not government centric. In other words, the incentive mm -hmm. forces, if you want to buy my tea, okay, I have to persuade you it's really good. And if it's really good, you'll come back. In other words, it forces me to serve you well. Mm -hmm. So there is a law that I showed you like a few months ago. Mm -hmm. And you said, God, I love this law. It's the marketplace facilitator law. Yep. That means that Amazon has to collect sales tax and remit it for the sellers. Sure. And that's happening state by state. There's just a few that are holding sure. out. Yeah, makes it uh, easier. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. without law, Amazon would not do that. Okay, I'm not anti-law. So it, okay. it, this isn't a discussion about it's, law. It is a regulation. There is law. If I go kill someone, I get thrown in jail. Like that's fair, <laughs> okay. right? If okay. I go steal something, we're not against law. I'm talking about the, the motivation what drives a company and how much freedom it is given. This is why I, do, okay, so let me, I know this is a little bit of veering off, but are you aware of the inflation that's starting to happen right now? Uh, not to the degree, but I know it's happening. Okay, so not to get into politics, but thanks to Trump and Biden, who sent a ton of money in the economy, what cost me maybe $2.20 to buy a vegan loaf of bread at Trader Joe's last week will probably go up to $3.20 in the next few months. Okay, so you're saying inflation is like, 150%? I'm simply making, I'm not, I'm simply making a point that when the government is, when the government tries to help the economy, when they step in to fix things and change things, it never goes well. This is the whole reason we have tax incentives that Tom Wright talks about for buying properties and getting tax incentives for tax write-offs. Back to your point, I asked you a question, and I still want to hear this because you haven't answered it yet. Okay, but I missed. Are you saying, Jay, that just one dime or any company, let's say okay. you start your lemonade company, okay? Yeah. Cannot buy another company. No, I'm not saying that, but I am saying that you should not be able to buy a, in a company in the same industry if that puts you at some sort of threshold, like say 50%, let's say you own half the market or something like that. So you're saying government should limit how much market share a company has? Yes. I do think so. And that happens with the FTC. There are some things, mergers that have gone through that I don't think should have. Um, like, I don't think at g should have bought in Spectrum. I don't think that Disney should have been being able to buy Fox, to buy Fox. Um, those I see as anti-competitive because it's getting more centralized and more money is going to one people as opposed to several people. And when money goes to several people, then everybody has money to spend between each other. The economy is better. But why not allow other people then to say, look, because this company is only giving Jay two options between spec Fiber Spectrum and, eight and um, Time Warner, why not we start a separate company over here to compete with that? If they're raising the prices, as you had mentioned, or you mentioned about Walmart, mm -hmm. that creates a gap in the market, which means opportunity. I just so that's don't the think whole that's point realistic of capitalism. all the time. But it happens all the time in San Francisco with new startups. Like every year, there's new tech companies. It just keeps happening over and over and over again. Also, how long can we wait? How long can we wait for somebody to come in and interfere while people are suffering, while people are being extorted for all of the money that so they're do able you, to charge? Do you feel extorted by at and Is it that intense? Uh, that one, I don't think it's as intense, okay. but like, but let's say like in Puerto Rico, yeah. then there's no water available. Right. And somebody's selling bottled water. It's right. hard to get to. Right. And they want to charge ten dollars a water bottle. Yeah, right. that's that they need it to live. Right. So that is unfair extortion. Then why don't you and I go there and dig a well and provide water for a much lower cost that undercuts the competition? What and now do we in the put meantime? that jackass out of business. That, that's so much time though that people are in the meantime suffering. So you feel like the government's job is to come in and fix that? Like the, the, they come in, call in the cavalry, and we're going to fix it for you and everything. I mean, just look at the history. I mean, okay. <laughs> Look at the government's budget. Like, can you, I mean, we're about to come out with a video on budget. <laughs> like, you're a budgeting uh, man, right? Yes, I am. You are good with your budget. I'm great with my budget. Look at the government's budget. Not great. Look how they manage their money. Not well. Would you trust them to handle capitalism for us instead of letting I, the market be free? But that's a flawed argument because some things the government does well and other things they suck at. But they're both related to finances. This is an economical mm -hmm. argument. I mean, also the budget and a personal person's budget are not one and the same. It's, well, there is something in common where are you getting a great return for your investment? Like yeah. if you're spending- Are you tracking what's going out, what's coming in? What's your profit? like? Right. It, well, it, not quite that actually. So, like, like let's say uh, the U.S. spends a billion dollars on infrastructure. Sure. If you get 
that billion dollars of infrastructure to work for the the economy, gives people jobs, and you get one and a half billion out of that, Agreed. then that debt of a billion dollars was worth it. Absolutely. But that does that's not very common with people. So I don't think that they're one and the same. There's I think it's a false equivalency. But it's still tracking money and how to manage it. Yeah. So uh, we're getting way off track <laughs> with uh, Amazon acquired MGM. They have AWS. Mm -hmm. um, there are specific laws that are being fought for. Here's another reason why we're talking about it today. Yeah. Amazon has threatened if these go through mm -hmm. that they may not serve third party sellers anymore. They'll be cut out. Right. They'll only sell first party products. Right. Do you think that there's any merit in that? So let me make sure I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So you're saying that if these this legislation they want to be passed or these whatever, basically to, to cut down Amazon into pieces, mm -hmm. that Amazon's response is like out of spite, we're exactly going to cut off third party of sellers. Exactly is that what they're saying? Or that is, is it exactly what they're saying? Are, are you sure? No financial. Re like before Amazon owned AWS, before they owned Whole Foods, before they're trying to buy MGM. Right. They serve third party sellers. Sure. It's been a long time. Yeah. So by removing everything else that was there after they started third party sellers, right. if you remove that, what's the difference? Right. It, to me, it's just so a false Amazon threat. isn't saying, hey, if you cut us if you cut us down, that's one of the cuts that's going to happen. That's no, not what they're saying. No, no, they are. They are threatening that it's, it's exactly what's gonna happen. That they're gonna How cut do you know out it's third a threat? party. It's, and, it's a, and by the way, I just want to make clear to everyone watching, I'm, I don't work for Amazon. <laughs> they don't give me any special favors at all. They've suspended tons of my accounts. I have a lot of reasons to be pissed off, okay? Yeah. But for the sake of argument, how do you know it's an actual threat versus, guys, do you realize what this is going to do to a bunch of businesses and third-party sellers? Because like it's, it's it can, not That could also be portrayed a different way, you know? Right. Because it's not the best for their bottom line. Like I said earlier, you can depend on companies, whether it's moral or not, mm -hmm. they will always do what is in their best interest financially in their I, best I, interest. I would be careful with that, third, absolutely. Third, third the more I think about it, that's actually mm, that hasn't been true for just one dime. You're you're somewhat of an idealist, so that doesn't really work for every small company. Right. You know, some people are also, there's also like- There's a, companies that give a lot and they do mm -hmm. it from the joy of their heart. Right. And then it also benefits them. Like, let's say a a company goes, a coffee company goes completely fair trade. Right. And they're not legally required to. Sure. By advertising the fair trade, they it's might good. get more market share. Right. But it, I don't want to just assume mm -hmm. that because they did that, it was only for self-serving narcissistic purposes. I think it's naive to they think actually, otherwise. Well, if you think it's the, that's the only reason they did it, then that is kind of an abysmal <laughs> view of humanity. Like there are people Maybe in this is. world who actually enjoy helping people with no expectation in return. And if they so happen to get blessed for it, that's even that much more awesome. We can't all expect people to be King or Carter or, <laughs> or Malcolm. I don't expect them, but I think a lot of many, many people in this world do. So I, my point is, I don't want to start from the axiom. And I know I agreed to it earlier, but the more I think about it, I don't want to start <laughs> from the axiom that a company, will a company do whatever it takes to survive and grow? Is that going to be their main incentive? Absolutely. To be profitable? Yes. Mm -hmm. But to say that's it and there's no, because remember, a company is made up of people, mm -hmm. right? Th this right. this gets into the whole um, company race theory, like which it. is another conversation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Companies are made Nick up Romney. of humans, just like government, right? They're made up of mm -hmm. individuals. There are people I know who own companies who, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, ben Arterberg, he owns Pet Honesty. This guy mm -hmm. gives a ton away to people. No one knows about it. He doesn't market it. He gives a ton of his company profits away to help people. That's just because the kind of person he is. Right. So right there. So it, there's the, so many situations where there are companies who give and they enjoy giving for its own sake. It's mm -hmm. not wrong if they leverage that to market as well. The larger company is, the less likely that giving for the sake of giving is going to happen. How do you know that? Because it's like in it was some beer company that donated like one million dollars and then they spent a hundred million dollars advertising away that they gave a million dollars to you're using one know. example to prove an axiom you no can't I'm, do that. I'm giving you an instance there's okay. a ton of what about all the other instances where it didn't happen 
Well, am, am I going to get name every instance where a company is? <laughs> well, if you're going to make a universal statement that the bigger a company is, the less likely are to do something out of the goodness of their heart, then you need some kind of evidence to back that up, not just mm -hmm. one random instance. Well, also, like just one dime, we don't have shareholders. They're right. not people are saying profit, 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 profit. <laughs> you know, they're, they're thinking about the short term. <laughs> If, when you have shareholders, there's a lot of pressure because if you don't deliver to them, if if the shareholders are what can kick you out and not a board of directors, sure. then you lose your job. Why do you assume that the bigger company is the more evil it is? I, I think it's I, I patterns. Sense that. It's patterns. Okay. I think it's just but observation. That's kind of like a trending thing where people, oh, they're big, they must be bad. Wouldn't you agree with the argument as well that it's really easy to, let's use Jeff as an example, okay? Uh -huh. Jeff yeah. Bezos, he's easier to criticize now that he's got his um, blue what? His his spaceship that went into the orbit. Oh, I don't know the name of the, the ship. The blue something. Yeah. Um, ah, it's slipping my mind. Anyways, now that he's big, now that he's famous, yeah. it's really easy to criticize the guy, right? No For one criticized him when he was by himself, sitting mm -hmm. there working with his wife. It's just, yeah. why does being big mean bad? Like, where's the logic behind that? Well, it's like, people aren't going to make YouTube expose exposés about me because I'm <laughs> like, what have I so done? what you're saying, you just, you just disproved your point, my friend, because what you're saying, why do people do YouTube exposés? Well, they want money, right? They want to grow. That it, like same thing with So news. there's incentive, their incentive to yeah. criticize big companies. It and is. if people watch those criticisms, they're more likely to think the same. Therefore, it already biases the argument that big companies tend to be more evil and wicked. Well, let's yeah? say that let's say that um, I am a person I'm I'm not. Let's say I'm a communist, right? <laughs> <laughs> let's say, let's say let's say that for instance. Yep. And like I'm just really hardcore and I'm and I'm just being regular level mischief in my life. Sure. As an individual, I don't have influence or money like yeah no one's going to come after me because i can't do anything you go sure. after the people that can and do do great things great right. things good or bad do you think there's a greater expectation for a large company to do good than one individual who has just a little bit of money do you think there's a yes. greater moral authority I, or a moral uh, requirement yeah there's more influence like there's more influence but my question influence. is should we expect more in other words mm -hmm. bobby mcgee is he has a hundred million dollars. Okay. Right. Lucy Pickleberry has ten dollars. I know mm -hmm. this is an extreme example. Right. Should we expect Bobby? Not proportionally, but should we expect him? Is he more required to help people than Lucy? That's my question. With great power comes great responsibility. Okay, but responsibility is not the same Money as being is... required to do something for people that Requir no one required him to do. Required? No, I don't okay. think any company should be required to be humanitarian. Well, maybe not required don't. legally. I'm just yeah. saying should. There's this feeling. Well, because you have a lot of money, Bill Gates, you should mm -hmm. be doing more. Money is power, and if you have power, then if you're not using it for good, then it's power for the sake of power. But you're assuming that if they're not giving it away, they're not using it for good. What about the employees who are getting paid a wage and it's allowing them to pay their mortgage and their house and get things and their college is being paid for, et cetera? Yeah. Like, see I'm what not, I mean? I'm not asking for Jeff Bezos to donate half of his fortune to world hunger or homelessness. I get that, I, but do you get what I'm saying? Right. The I premise, expect, where's that coming from? I expect their employees to be treated fairly with decent wages and decent living uh, living conditions, working conditions. You know, those are the types of things that Cesar Chavez fought for. Right. I, I just don't see, because this is not an agricultural worker, right. that they should be treated inhumanely. Right. But that's still kind of a diversion of my point. My point mm -hmm. is, should someone who has more wealth, whether it's a company or individual, are they required to donate more? Should they be? Should there no. be a moral sense of obligation that because you have a lot, you need to give more? That if, that's my question. My Jay. my feeling is like if you have the same morals that I do, right? Then yes, if you have right. more, then you should give more, right? Because like Spider Man again, if you have powers, then if you're not using them for good, then if something happens, it's partly because of you. Something mm -hmm. bad happens, you know. And it's 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 your fault if something bad happens. Yeah, because it's like you could have done something and instead you didn't. So let's say people are dying. This is an extreme example, okay? okay. Let's say people in a city have a disease and are dying of it. Mm -hmm. And this company has the money where they could pay for, completely fund the creation. This is actually kind of ironic, thinking of COVID, but the create a um, 
a vaccine to stop the disease. So what mm -hmm. you're saying is if they don't do anything, it's their fault. Yes? I would say not theirs specifically. Okay. But for people with power in general. Right. Like okay. It's much more general. It's widespread. Kind of right. just like, you know. More a principle. It's, it, yeah, it's a principle. It's more just like you are one person in a drop in the ocean. And you can say that, you know, like recycling. Yeah. Like if I don't recycle, the earth really isn't going to be different. But if I do, and then a lot of other people do that too, it makes a difference. Sure. Totally agree with you on that. I just, the only, mm -hmm. the part that I resist firmly is the, and this has happened on Cheddar News where when they interviewed me, they brought this up. They talked right before they had me on, they mm -hmm. talked about how these people are saying, hey, you know, Jeff Bezos is a psychopath. I know you don't think he's that. I don't the think extreme, he's a psychopath. But they're like going on and on and on about like, you should be giving, you should be giving, you should be sharing. And I'm sitting here thinking, as soon as I feel as a multimillionaire obligated to do that because I have a lot, all of a sudden I'm not doing it for the right motive anymore. Now, to, just to be totally transparent, mm -hmm. we give 20% away. We, we did right. We I, give I twenty percent away. Yeah, myself, we as in myself and my wife, and sure. I agree with the principle. I love it. It's just as soon as it's obligated, or there's this like online community saying, "Well, you must because you have a lot of power, a lot of yeah. money." You've it's like I've lived on if both sides of those tracks, Jay, and it's just simply mm -hmm. people don't know how much someone has to go through and how much they have to sacrifice to get to the point. They sacrifice mm -hmm. so they received more. No one gave me a lucky break. Right. No one walked up and said, "Hey, here's a check." You know? Yeah. It's also like how much do you really need? Right. Um, like mo being a multimillionaire, people can be multimillionaires and not give a cent away. It's because yeah. multimillions in the grand scheme of things is not that much. Right. Absolutely. When you're a billionaire, that's just more money than somebody could ever spend in their life. So Absolutely. what's the point of it? Why the, not use it to help? Why I not? I totally agree with you from that perspective. Yes. yes. But I'm going to go back that's to your original question. I know. Do you think Amazon should be broken up? And do you think they mm -hmm. are? they are going against antitrust laws. Are they, um, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I wouldn't specifically call them out. I've mm -hmm. called out at and I've mm -hmm. called out Disney, Amazon, maybe there's something that I don't know, Right. but for them specifically, I don't see why they would have to be broken up. But these acts, like if you actually read the language of these acts, the Ending mm -hmm. Platform Monopolies Act, the, the language in these bills the American Innovation and Choice Online Act, the End Platform Monopolies Act. To me, they don't say anything specifically that Amazon is doing that I know of that would force Amazon to be broken up. Yeah. But the language in these laws are basically to keep the market competitive. Yes. Because I believe that capitalism only works if there is competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that when someone has too much of the market share, and in some cases, 100%, mm -hmm. that that means customers and the people, working people lose. E I mean, the economy even, loses. Even though for them to get to that point, they had mm -hmm. to do such a good, because the customers are paying for their check. Mm -hmm. They had to do such a good job for the customers that the customers were willing to go, I'm going to go with them. You had a better lemonade stand, so you earned the right. So you literally did a better job. You had better lemonade. It was colder. It was fresher. You were better at customer service than I was. So you earned those customers. How was that unfair? That's the part I really wrestle with. The, but, well, it's kind of like the, the mean, it's almost the reverse of the means justifying the end. Sure. The, where, in this situation, I think they do. Because what's the evil in the end that you have all the customers? No, no, what that, did you do wrong? The, no, it's not like that company's evil. Right. I'm not saying that. Sure. I'm saying that the market suffers and that I think that the government should step in to keep the market going afloat or else you have the Great Depression. The, the government you were talking about, the government never working. It's the government that got us out of the Great no, Depression. It's not. Totally disagree with you. The, That's another conversation, but I 100% disagree also, with you. Like, also, yeah. without government intervention, that made it worse. there would still be slavery. Without government intervention, there would still be housing discrimination. But you have to remember something. Slavery is a moral issue. That has nothing to do with free capitalism. Oh, but it does. How? Because slaves is how people got their capital back then. Okay, I get that point, but you're literally treating people like animals, like I own you, mm -hmm. like an animal. Like, and mm -hmm. again, someone's gonna so be offended by us animals, but yeah. you get what I'm saying, right? I don't see this That's as like even... a moral issue. That's like treating someone mm -hmm. less than someone else. That doesn't fit into, mm -hmm. hey, I'm going to buy your lemonade because you did a better job. You're treating me 
like royalty. You're literally serving me. Mm -hmm. So I don't see how that can become part of the argument. I, I, I don't. I don't see us as actually disagreeing. I just think of us as different levels of where I agree. we think our, the line is. Our premise is, is very similar. <laughs> uh, yeah, basically, just like we agree that moral authority sometimes needs to occur through government. <sighs> That's the part I wrestle with, Jay. Because, because I mean, if you moral think, authority. Slavery, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. But a market where people so, are, fr I am. So you're free. not absolutist. You're not huh? absolute. You are not absolutist when it comes to the government doing anything because of slavery is something you agree with. It's something very of course. harsh. Of course. But it absolutely. puts you at a non-zero percent of that belief. Fair enough. But I, the way I look at it is this: if if I if I do a good job and someone will pay me over a competitor. Mm -hmm. That was, f they were free. They had the choice. That wasn't forced by anyone. I had to persuade them. I can't force someone to, to, to buy my rum glass. See what I mean? Yeah, well, people That's are the beauty of capitalism. Now, I guess the point comes to at what point does something become immoral? And, and I'm just, to, to yeah. say, well, because your only options are Time Warner and um, Spectrum, it's, it, and, and I know you're not saying that's a huge fussy issue, but your, your point immoral. is, it's an, an illustration I'm not saying that's immoral. I'm saying that's so, bad for capitalism. Yeah, but then that brings on a new opportunity. Did you hear of the, um, I used to use Cricket. Are you familiar with Cricket? It's a cell phone service. Not I really, bought no. into them because they were better than AT&T. They, they used the same um, cell phone towers. They uh -huh. had better prices. I used them for a while. Okay. Then AT&T bought them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, before you said playing it to your point. Uh, you me, are. <laughs> and I'm not. They, rem they kept the same prices. They never went up. They remained competitive. They treated it as its own separate company. Now, did that eventually simulate? I don't know. I haven't followed it since. But mm -hmm. my point was, for me as a customer, ultimately, AT&T did a really good job. And so I think they earned it. They earned it. I, the, a competitor formed. It forced AT&T to have to spend money. And what? why are we forgetting about the owners of Cricket? how they made a lot of money. How about all them? How about the employees who possibly had shares in the company? When that company sold, a lot of those people became very wealthy. Right. Th that's capitalism. Now those people have money. But what's the end result? The end result is those people worked hard, they made money, AT&T earned the right because they did a good job, and I still got great service. Okay. I, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't think that we're gonna come to some sort no, no, of and that's understanding fine. on this. I think this is a great topic. And for anyone listening, hope we'd love to get your guys' thoughts and mm -hmm. feel free to debate it. We don't mind. Um, it's a really good conversation. And I just wanna say thank you, Jay, for being a guest on the Dogcast. Oh, my pleasure. Great conversation, really fun talking to you. Well, let's do it again. And I hope you guys had an awesome time listening. And by the way, if you want to know where can I find the Jodcast with Seth Kniep, Kniep in it real. All you need to do is go to jod.com slash podcast. That's it. Just go right there. You can find us on iHeartRadio. You can find us on Spotify. You can find us on Apple Music. Apple Music. Absolutely. Or Apple, 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 Podcasts. Apple Podcasts. We're on like 14, I keep 15. I think of it as iTunes. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I can't. Yeah. I'm yeah. so glad iTunes is over. I yeah. hated that program. Oh, so I guess the point, the last point before we yeah, end yeah. this sure. is that I think it's a bluff. What? That, that Amazon would cut out third party sellers. I sure as heck hope they don't. And here's the thing. Here would be my argument against anyone who says we should, you know, chop them into pieces is Amazon has created capitalism on their own platform. They right. literally have. Like mm -hmm. the fact that different sellers can compete with each other on right. Amazon's platform, I think that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I just I just think that it's something that they're using as a shield against rec regulators and it wouldn't make sense for the bo bottom line. It's cutting off their nose despite their face. Hmm. It's like once it's done, what's the point? Right. Well, would they really do it? Yeah. Right. There's no point other than to like, we're going to hurt the economy and private sellers. Maybe they want the third party sellers to rise I mean, up and like, <laughs> no, you can't do this. <laughs> I mean, if they do that. Walmart or another marketplace is going to overthrow them yeah. because they'll accept third party. And sellers. that's actually, I literally, I only took a few notes before this, but I literally wrote down that Walmart <laughs> actually, check this out. This is insane. Uh -huh. Okay. Amazon's total equity as of 2020 was 93.4 billion. Walmart's was 74.66 billion. But in Walmart's first quarter of this year, they did 138 billion. Amazon only did 108. My hmm. point is, even though Walmart is definitely not as big of a player in the online space, this mm -hmm. is another example of, I love it that Walmart is succeeding because it's going to force Amazon to do a better job for when they treat their sellers like crap.
they have a agree. major issue with that. Absolutely. Like you get suspended, you open an account because you got one period wrong. Like that's insane. I mean, it's same thing with wages too. If like, if you're, store across the street is offering $15 an hour and you're offering 10. Exactly. They're, they're going to go to the 15 place. Exactly. And that's why I have great service at Costco and In-N-Out. Yeah. Because they pay more. <laughs> yeah. Which I do. We can talk about this in the future. But um, the irony in this conversation to me is if you look at Facebook, Google, um, Apple. who else? Um, Apple, but more specifically Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, and Google. There's uh-huh. this whole thing going on where people are getting canceled. And this is more of a political conversation okay. I know. Yeah. These are huge tech companies. And there's a lot of people who are more conservative, and I'm pretty conservative, sure. who are like, man, that ain't right. Like, this is freedom of speech. My mm-hmm. response to that is these companies, as horrible as it is, and in many situations, I think they are wrong what they do. If, mm-hmm. oh, you disagree with me, and then they have, I won't get into it, but anyways, mm-hmm. they cancel them, or they just remove them, or they say, you broke community rules, you go look at the rules, like they actually didn't break any. A lot of conservative people would say that's wrong. Well, but here's what, if we believe in <laughs> capitalism, they have uh-huh. the right to do that. Yeah. So I have the right to say, you know what? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to train this student because I don't like your attitude. Like we literally have that right. That's yeah. the So I, I think someone has to be careful with that mm-hmm. argument. As much as I hate what's happening in some cases, I think it's unfair. Right. If we believe in capitalism, or at least freedom of speech in capitalism combined, what does that look like? But does that actually happen? Do people with large platforms or businesses with a large market share actually get canceled? Like, let's say people mm. try to cancel Chick Fil A because donations to certain they had a bunch of protests a while groups. back. Yeah, the Chick Fil A here in Austin, mm-hmm. we're in Texas still. Yep, <laughs> even though it's a blue city. Yep, is always packed. Right. Always packed because and they do a good job for people. Exactly. And people who don't care ha- about your religion, my or, chicken is good. No, 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 Thank no, no, no. you. That's not the point I'm making. The point is people who believe in what they do right. are going to go serve them. So yeah. people who get canceled right. often aren't really getting canceled because the people who believe in what they do will massively swing right. swing a new application way. comes out where people can yeah. talk about their values. So, like I think yeah. it's a different different uh, conversation, yeah. but I don't think that cancel culture is as big as of a deal as people, people try to make it to be. People try to make it a deal because I don't think people actually get canceled, hmm. even like, when they I should. can still walk out of my front door and talk. Yeah. I can still go post on some other platform if I want to. Yeah, like even when even when it should, which is rare, right. I think that actually people should get canceled. It still doesn't happen. Hmm. All right, would love to hear your guys' thoughts. You guys have an awesome day. This is Seth Kniep, Kniep It Real, and enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>